There's a trick to throw a rock over a tree. Everything has a quick release or wing nuts. Oh, that looks like it'll hold. Let's go on a hog hunt. Yeah. This whole contraption was invented by Leonardo da Vinci in the 1400s. Whoa, ah, the rock got me. It's just kind of weird. Six hours to cook. You learn a lot of times from mistakes. having chicken today absolutely not I've tried this rotisserie contraption I don't know I lost track how many times five six sometimes I you know I prepare the chicken ahead of time I marinate it I get everything ready and the contraption doesn't work well this time I'm pretty sure it's gonna work and I can't take another chicken no more chicken. Nope, no more chicken. Absolutely not. What do we want? Roasted pig. When do we want it? Tonight. So let's go get set up at the campsite and then we're gonna go and get some pig to roast. That'll be a sight to see. A whole pig roasting on a spit in a family campground, head and all. So this is the campsite today. I decided to go to an organized car camping campground uh, just for convenience because I have a lot to accomplish. Uh, I had to be careful about selecting a site because I needed a straight line from the fire pit to a branch so there's a branch up there, horizontal, that I can use for the, uh, the rock or water. I might use water jugs for the weight because I don't see any rocks around the campsite here. All right, let's get set up. of the spit it's kind of important that it be on to one side of the fire ring so I can move coals over there without having flame coming up hopefully so that means uh, I need to place this I don't want it to interfere with the grid either so it has to be somewhat precise um, and it also has to be in line with the middle post of the entrapment contraption. So if we're looking at the line of sight, the branches behind me, and I'll have to make a little adjustment and figure that out. So 
So I want the hole to be in the center of the fire pit and a stick will hold it in place. So we want the other end somewhere around here. Doesn't have to be, we have some flexibility in moving it. So I'm thinking right around there. The great thing about this system is that I don't need any tools to set it up. Just a rock. All right. Everything has a quick release or wing nuts. Actually, let's make this a bit lower so we don't need the heat to be up too high and use too much wood. Just loosen these wing nuts, drop it down. Where do you think would be good? Maybe about there. Hopefully that's not too close, but if it is, it's easy to adjust. Here's a trick to throw a rock over a tree with the rope attached. Just tie it inside one of these plastic bags. Hopefully we won't hurt anyone. Instead of using this bushcraft pulley, uh, which is a little bit noisy, it kind of squeaks. I don't know if you heard it in my last video. I don't think I can duplicate it now, but it does squeak. And I want to be a little more quiet since I'm in a campground family campground so I got this pulley here stainless steel I'll put the rope through there and it should spin real smoothly for the part that swings around on the escapement I was using a rock but I was talking to my dad and he's really good at all this type of stuff he suggested using a round ball so I got this stainless steel ball bearing and found out that there's a way you can attach paracord to it. It's a type of knot called monkey's fist. You hold the bearing in between your middle finger and index finger. And then uh, hold the paracord with your thumb here. And there are much better videos on YouTube. You, you can watch this and learn about it but this is my very first attempt so you want to wrap paracord and i have about a eight or nine foot section that i cut i'm gonna wrap it i think six or seven times keep it fairly snug ah all right let's start over wrap this around doesn't want to stay on there let's see now we're gonna do a pivot doesn't seem right does it yeah let's Let's try that again. Maybe we go the other way. Hold that there. No. And then what? And then I think, whoa, let's try this. We're gonna go. Oh no, but we want it actually on the ball. We wanna stay on the ball. Okay, now, this time we're gonna go through. I don't know if I can take my fingers out. Oh, okay, let's start over. Oh no, now we're gonna go the other way. I think it would be helpful if we could keep this string on there. Let's keep going. Maybe if I hold the end. So we have six verticals and six horizontals. Now, let's carefully remove our fingers. Hopefully the ball won't fall out. See, this time, instead of going over, we're going under. Uh-oh. I can feel it slipping. That's barely on there. <laughs> well, that looks like it'll hold. All right, well, it looks like I'm going to have to use a rock today. I'm going back to the river to find a good, smooth rock. tied 
on there. And now it's time to wind up the contraption, the escapement. Keep it nice and tight and close. That'll provide some friction. All right, we have it working. And this time, instead of using rocks, I'm using a gallon of water way up there in the tree. So, the uh, wheel spins very slowly. There are a couple things about South Carolina that are very similar to the Philippines. Number one, the summers are super hot and humid. And number two, boar hunting is really a thing. This will be my very first time going hunting for boar in South Carolina or anywhere. So as they say down here in the South, bless your heart for coming with me. And let's go on a hog hunt. Yeah. Kakatan no call. Nong lichen bad boy mama ya. Shh. These are cotton balls dipped in Vaseline. It's kind of my go-to for starting a fire. Now I'm gonna take this spit out a bit, I guess. Oh, look at that, sweet. Okay, I can slide the chicken right on there. Can you see that? Let me see. Yeah. Take these work gloves off. Let's put on, let's see, I've got this double bagged. Oh, it's wet. Both, both bags are wet. Oh, wow. Well. I'm gonna 
use this bag as a glove, I guess. Grab him by the leg. Get that marinade to drip out. Right. Now I'm gonna... This spit is very hot, so I'm gonna be careful. Put the chicken on. Nice. Look at that. Now, kind of need something to support that, but all right. Uh, I need string. What do I do with my string? Well, I just I guess I'm just going to get my hands dirty. We're going to get all chickenated. Tie the string on one leg. Then I'm going to st stuff the cavity with these apples. And these were two for four dollars. This is rosemary. Stick that in there. And this is basil. I don't really know if this affects the taste a whole lot, but I know actually with the uh, when I did it with the lemongrass, it really made the chicken taste uh, like citrus, had a citrus flavor, which is really good. So I think this really helps stuffing the chicken with apples and these herbs. Tie that tail on whatever it is. You know, the end piece of the chicken. Wrap that around. I don't know if this is going to be possible to get this in the hole. Hmm. I should have done that before stuffing it. Duh. There. I think I got it. <clears throat> yes. We got it. Right over the fire now. Now I gotta clean my hands. All right, I got the chicken on the rotisserie with the steak stuck through. So uh, there's a hole in the spit that the stick went through. Well, I know it's not pork, but at least uh, this time I used my wife's marinade. She has a special marinade, the chicken marinated for three days. And I was able to uh, get it on the spit with the stick through it. So it's working pretty well. It's spinning, the whole contraption is working. I'm very pleased with it. So I'm looking forward to trying it out and I threw a potato on the fire actually and I'll cook some vegetables later once we get the chicken closer to the temperature of 165 Fahrenheit. Let me explain this if you haven't seen my previous video when I did the dry run. Uh, this whole contraption was invented by Leonardo da Vinci in the 1400s. 
And it all starts at the other end, actually, where there is, if you follow this rope, it goes to the spit through a bicycle. It's looped around that bicycle wheel. It goes up the tree to a pulley way up in the tree there. And through the pulley, the rope goes down to a gallon of water. So there's constant tension on that rope. And that tension spins the wheel and in turn spins the spit. And over here on this, this is called an escapement. It's an early um, mechanism for clocks. Uh, a, gra uh, a grandfather clock kind of works on a similar principle. Uh, but uh, if that rope was not wrapped around that middle pole, which freely spins, then the rock would just drop. I mean, the uh, water would just drop. But this way there's a controlled drop because all that tension on that wound up rope with the water on the other end, pulling it in the other direction. Well, as that rope unwinds, it spins this middle pole with that arm on it. And at the end of the arm, there's a rope tied with a rock at the end. So what that does is delay the drop of the gallon of water. Because if, if there was no delay, the rope would just unwind very quickly and the chicken would probably spin off the spit. But this is a very controlled drop. I'm very excited that this works and I have a lot of uh, plans for similar types of contraptions. Actually, I'll, I'll probably still use this basic, uh, what do you call it? A, uh, not a platform, but an escapement, I guess. And you see over here, I've been working on another idea up there. Whoa, ah, the rock got me. This is not uh, the kind of thing that you should use with kids around because you don't want them to get hit in the head with a rock. It's kind of dangerous. Uh, unless you put like a, a dog fence around it or something. But even then, if there are kids around, I wouldn't do it. That's why I'm working on this up here, which you'll see. Please like and subscribe. Uh, follow my page and... I've got big plans for this. This is really fun. I enjoy it so much. The chicken is cooking. Probably should throw another log on the fire. The chicken's cooking. There's my potato down there. And the spit is turning. It's just working like, uh, working like a gem. Once in a while, I'll put some marinade on it. Keep that skin moist. This is gonna be a nice golden color. I saw some videos of some people in the Philippines cooking a whole pig on a spit. I think they do that for special occasions. Maybe someone's birthday, maybe a wedding, but it's quite a sight, at least on video. The rotisserie is still spinning. It works in the daytime and night. We're not dependent on solar power here. And that got me to thinking about how in the Old Testament, it was forbidden for Jewish people to eat pig. Got some lights on the table there. Uh, tonight, I'm, I'm gonna sleep in this U.S. Army surplus bivy. It's, uh, it's got all the the uh, inserts, the sleeping bags, summer, uh, fall, and winter, or whatever they are, I forget. 
and I got my uh, air mattress inside this waterproof biz bivy on the outside there. So I'm going to try that, uh, sleep next to the fire. And then in the New Testament, there's an account in the Gospels of Jesus encountering a demon possessed. And that way I could probably just reach out, grab a log and throw it on if I get cold. Legion. Uh, the demons knew it was the Son of God. They knew they were in trouble. So they said to Jesus, uh, please cast us into this herd of swine passing by. And he said, okay. So the demons were sent into the herd of swine. Uh, I also brought a pillow today. Usually I don't get to bring a pillow because it's just too much extra weight, but this is car camping and I kind of like it. And the pigs ran down to the water and drowned. You know, demon possession is not something we really hear about much. It's kind of weird in the United States. I ended up tying a bag around the rock because it kept coming off, but this one seems to be holding okay. Let's, uh, let's let this run and see how long the cycle will last before I have to wind it up again. Here we go. Whoa, be careful. Whoa. And I remember a, a missionary once saying that somebody asked him, why is it that in the third world, there seems to be so much demon possession, but in the industrialized countries, there isn't. And he said that he thought it was because Satan works by distracting people from God with money, all right? They revolve their lives around money. But in the third world, that's not possible. So Satan works through his minions to possess people and that causes all kinds of weird things. So it just landed at 24 minutes, but it's still swinging because there's still tension on the line. So let's go over to the escapement. So I'd say right around 25 minutes, not bad. So that got me to thinking, well, where do demons come from anyway? Before Adam and Eve were created and before the earth was created, God created angels. And God gave the angels kind of a test, kind of like he gave Adam and Eve a test in the Garden of Eden. Well, he gave the angels a test to see if they would obey God or disobey God. I noticed that the longer the run, the longer the rope, the longer it runs. So, that's interesting. Satan, or Lucifer, uh, led a rebellion against God and took a third of the angels with him. Two-thirds were obedient to God, two-thirds of the angels, and they were uh, what theologically is called confirmed. They were confirmed at that point in time, and they could, from that point in time on, they could not disobey God, they could not sin. Satan took a third of the angels with him. They have the ability to be on the earth and possess people. It's a temporary situation for them. Uh, they're doomed, but that's how they came about. Put some water on to boil for green beans and the potatoes done. A knife goes right through it very easily. So that's done. I'm just keeping it warm there. The water's boiling, so it's time to add the green beans. One forty-eight, one forty-nine, one fifty. We need it to be up to about one sixty-five. I don't really know how to explain it, but there's something really satisfying to the soul about sitting by the campfire. 
I was trying to figure out why is it taking so long? It's almost 11 o'clock. Have you ever heard of a chicken taking six hours to cook? And then I realized I haven't been breaking the coals under the chicken. So I'm losing out on all that heat. But that's why going camping helps you learn skills. Um, you learn a lot of times from mistakes. So this was a big lesson for me. Let's take it off the spit. First we'll take this out. <laughs> and this. Move it over here. Good. Sure took a long time. It's very caramelized. Heavenly Father, thank you for this food. Oh, yeah. Mmm. Wow. Wow, that is flavorful. My wife's marinade is super delicious. That is so good. And it's very tender. Potato's not bad either. Mmm. I highly recommend this uh, rotisserie chicken with, with my wife's marinade. Uh, just uh, don't forget to break the coals under the chicken so that it will actually take less than six hours to cook. Mmm, that is so good. I might have to just finish that whole chicken. Delicious. Well, I'm all settled in. Sleeping under the stars. Well, there used to be stars. Sleeping under the clouds, I guess. I'll see you in the morning, Lord willing. I slept right by the fire and had a pretty good sleep. Um, I wasn't really cold. The sleeping bag kept me pretty warm. Uh, plus, being right next to the fire helped a lot. And I kind of slept in bursts on and off. And when I woke up, I just threw a log on the fire. It worked out pretty well, and it didn't rain. Time for coffee. So for coffee today, I use this cup once the water is boiling. And I like this method because I can use my favorite kind of coffee, which is mm, Dunkin' Donuts. That's what this is. I like that pretty well. Colombian blend. And I have some creamers here from Copper Cow Coffee. They're really good. Uh, just milk and sugar. No stuff that you can't pronounce. And once the water's ready, I'll pour it in here and sip it through this straw. It has a filter at the end, which is pretty cool. It makes it very convenient. And then to eat, we have an almond croissant. 
Oh, that looks good. I wonder if I should heat it up. We also have cookies that my wife Marianne made. Breakfast of champions. Looks good. Pretty easy to manage, not too heavy. Never forget the rebar, that's essential. One nice thing about car camping is that uh, I can bring this home, let it air out before I pack it up. Instead of packing it up wet, I could just throw it in the car. I'm starting to like car camping. Put the fire out.